Good morning, everybody. Hey, so good to see you all here this morning. This next module, it's got, or I should say this next uh, video, it's got some great, great meat and potatoes. So I'm going to get right to it. We're going to have a great discussion after. So hold on one second. get started on solidifying and supporting your own pyramid of success by focusing in on the qualities that Coach Wooden described as the mortar that holds the structure together. I'm going to review these and share some questions to help you see how you can apply these qualities in your own life. Remember, two of these qualities Coach considered so important that we're going to cover them in their own session. Let's start on the left-hand side of the pyramid with ambition. Ambition can get a bad rap these days, as it seems a lot of people use it as an excuse to do anything to succeed and run over anyone they feel gets in their way. But remember how Coach defines ambition as a desire to achieve a noble and worthy goal. When properly used, ambition can spur you to reach beyond yourself and to aspire to become great. Coach and his players were ambitious to be the best they could be at their particular sport of basketball. Coach said that championships were not the cake, but the icing on the cake. The daily practice, the doing, the working, and building of each player's ability, and the cohesion of the team, that was the real cake and the noble and worthy goal. What are you ambitious to accomplish? If you're shooting for a promotion at work, Great, but you might find it easier to earn that promotion if you focus instead on the noble goal of putting in the effort to be the best you can be at your job and to support the others at work to do their best too. Quality number two is adaptability. When you coach sports in a school or college setting, every year you have players leaving your team and new ones joining. And very early on, Coach Wooden discovered that you have to adapt to the talent that presents itself. Adapt your plans to the players you have so their unique talents can contribute to the team, Coach said. Coach learned this lesson doubly when Louis Alcindor or, or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar joined the Bruins team in 1965. Alcindor was so incredibly talented at the game and his seven foot two inch size meant the coach had to make a lot of changes to the team's offensive structure. Alcindor also forced UCLA's opponents to change their game to deal with him on the court. The teams that adapted at least stood a chance. Those that didn't were left in the dust. It's hard to believe one man can so completely dominate a game, but who Alcindor is something else. I used to write letters to coaches that did different things and then talk to them personally can about why they're back of it. You know, one of my uh, things at UCLA, every, at the end of every season, it would say about a, maybe, maybe a, a month probably after a season was over, I started researching some topic. Maybe it'd be zone defense, maybe it'd be tactic zone, maybe it'd be the jump shot, maybe it'd be free throw shooting, maybe it'd be rebounding. And I would go to, look through every book and study what they had on that particular aspect, certainly of coaches. Uh, uh, that I thought had teams that excelled in some division. And then I'd, I'd write them and, and I'd call them. I could and sometimes I'd meet with them. And uh, then from all these things, I would make one composite. And where if they all agreed on something, that must be pretty good. And if there were one had something that I thought they did well that others didn't, I want to know more about that. And I did the same thing when, uh, when uh, I got Al Cinder. I wanted things from... Uh, from coaches and had big players. Now I wanted to talk to some big players because I, I never had one. And uh, uh, Iba certainly was one that I wanted to, uh, uh, to talk to about his, his style and whatnot. And uh, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I enjoyed other styles and not just the same style to use. While I might like the style I'm using, I enjoyed 
finding out why they did other things and, and why they were successful about it. Not that I, I changed any. I'm aware I learned things that helped different aspects. But, but I, 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 I'm not as a challenge type of thing. I didn't look at that. We just to learn. Coach wrote that adaptability is important because it allows you to be ready to adapt to circumstances. The ones we can change, the ones we can't change, and the ones that may take some time to change. What's something in your life that you've had to adapt to? Getting married, the birth of a child, a new boss at work, being the boss at work, having a child go off to college and becoming an empty nester. Have you had to adapt to changes in your physical body, your relationships? In circumstances where you have had to adapt, did you find it easy or hard? Were you able to shape some of the situations or have you had to shape yourself? How long did it take? How hard was it? And how hard did you make it on yourself? Sometimes the best way to be more adaptable to change is to anticipate it. What's a change coming up that you already know about? A child going to school? A new project? New responsibilities? A change in a relationship? Spend a few minutes thinking about ways you can handle the change smoothly and adapt to new circumstances. Build your adaptability muscle and you may even find that many changes lead to better things and a better life. Quality number three is one that we need when we adapt to change and that's resourcefulness. Think of the hero of the 1980s TV show MacGyver. The entire show was based upon MacGyver's ability to get out of the worst situations using only whatever was at hand, like ballpoint pens, paper clips, and duct tape. Like many people after him, Coach put himself through college by doing whatever he could to earn money. He walked the aisles of the train going from Purdue to Chicago for football games, selling sandwiches, candy, and fruit to hungry students. He made lapel pins and sold them to Purdue band members. He printed basketball programs and had other students sell them in the stands at home games while Wooden himself was on the court playing. Some would call that entrepreneurial, but Coach called it resourcefulness. The next time you're faced with an obstacle or a challenge, think like MacGyver or Coach and come up with at least five ways you can overcome or get around it. Someone once said the greatest resource is always resourcefulness. Make sure you keep your resourcefulness always at hand. We're moving closer to the top. Number four on this side of the pyramid is fight. Like ambition, fight can have a lot of negative feelings associated with it. So instead of fight, think of this as fire in the belly. Focused passion and the deep desire to do what it takes when it needs to be done. Well, when Coach called about fight, he was not talking about somebody who wants to fight. He's talking about somebody who is enthusiastic and really wants to contribute. You know, they dive after the loose ball. They're ready to go uh, in there. And I love his thing is, you know, but uh, is, uh, you know, go quick, but don't hurry, you know. And uh, the way he said is, you know, think the thing uh, through. But if you have fight boy, you want to be the best, you want to contribute what you can. You, it, it's, it's really kind of a character thing that I'm going to give you my all. And uh, somebody who has real fight, you know, uh, I, I, my mother used to call it feisty. You know, you'd be feisty, you know. Could she mean you're going to keep and hang in there, you know. On the basketball court, fight manifests as hustle, giving every last ounce of effort to help the team. Fight has nothing to do with winning or losing. Listen to sports announcers calling a close match in tennis, basketball, soccer, pretty much any sport, and you'll hear them describe it as a hard-fought game on both sides. With fight, you bring desire to do your best to bear in any context. Do you want to win? Yes. But coach would say that if you have given your all, you will never lose, no matter what the final score. What have been the times in your life where you have needed fire in your belly to go up against tough odds? Do you remember the combination of focused passion, conviction, effort, and commitment to do whatever it takes that you brought to that time? 
How can you use that same feeling to help you do your best, no matter what the result? We'll cover the top quality on this side, faith, in the next session. But in the meantime, are you starting to see how important these character qualities are to helping you in living up to who you are at your best? And can you understand why Coach called these qualities the mortar that holds the entire pyramid together? Good. Let's hear from some of our champions and those who were influenced by Coach's example. They'll share how the qualities contained in the mortar shaped their success. Well, you know, sports helps you. In, in, it, it doesn't make you a better person, but obviously there's a lot of lessons in terms of the work you put in, the disappointments you have, uh, the highs and the lows. Uh, you have to learn how to handle them, and that's what life is. It's never, there's never a one way up. It's a, a series of ups and downs. and uh, You go through that uh, as a college student, uh, on and off the court. It's a, a little bit more intense and emotional on the court because there's so many people involved and things involved. Uh, and you're always under the microscope, but um, every day you're going through adversity and change, and those are the things that really build and mold who, who you are, what your character is going to be, how you handle those situations. I always say you don't learn that much when you're winning. It's when you lose that you find the true character of your players and of your team. Character counts in leadership. Character still counts in leadership. Character will always count in leadership, despite arguments to the contrary. So in Coach Wooden's case, uh, oh gosh, it would be honesty. Uh, it would be integrity. Uh, when I wrote that book, uh, how to be like Coach Wooden. I, I tracked down everybody I could get to, including one of his student managers, uh, who uh, was a businessman now in Pittsburgh. And he said to me, here's the deal uh, with uh, John Wooden. He said the John Wooden at practice was the same John Wooden in the locker room. And the John Wooden in the locker room was the same John Wooden on the campus. And the John Wooden on the campus was the same John Wooden at home with his family. Well, that's integrity to me. There, there are no uh, disagreements, you know, about what you're doing. Uh, in John Wooden's case, the tongue in his mouth was always pointing in the same direction as the tongue in his shoes. His walk and talk matched. Coach Wooden eventually molded his ideas, whether it be at Indiana State when he was a coach and other places. Uh, he molded his ideas. And after a while, the way the game can be played, and the way the game should be played from the way you view the game. Everybody views the game differently, and there's an awful lot of ways to get there. But I think, you know, I, Coach Witt and I both created a lot of pressure. He did that when he had smaller teams. When he started to have Walton, some of the great big guys he had, they, didn't run, they ran a lot, but they didn't press as much, nor did they need to. Uh, and I think we all make adaptations. But the philosophy of the game, for example, I heard someone ask, if you get more chances to do something well, uh, wouldn't you do it? Of course I would. Well, fast break basketball is just that. You try to get 75, 80 shots up in a game versus 60. Well, I got a better chance to be successful if, if taught well to, to, uh, to get, if I get 80 shots up versus 60. Conversely, I have more chances to make mistakes <laughs> because I have more and, and, and let the other team back into the game quickly, all the other various things. But that's where you've got to make lines of distinction of how you want to approach the game of basketball. And that's where I always watched, loved and watched Coach Wooden teams run. I think over the years, Coach adapted and did different things. He had big teams, small teams, and so on. But I think Coach Wooden truly understood how the game he wanted to see should be run. And I, you know, obviously, he did an incredible job. Well, adaptability is really important. I wrote a book with Don Shula, the Miami Dolphins coach, and one of his characteristics was audible ready, which is he said you have a plan, and if it looks like they are – up to your plan and stopping it, you don't wait till the next day to change your plan, you change it now. And so uh, what you need to do is constantly be looking at, is there any changes I need to make? I mean, if I'm trying to go from here to there and the thing they're blocking it, well, maybe uh, I'm, I'm hung up, you know. A friend of mine, Hiram Smith, is a great believer that, uh, that what we think you know, and believe drives our behavior and our behavior gets us results. 
And if we're not getting the results that we want, we can always trace it to a lousy belief, you know, and your beliefs will come out of your heart, but your beliefs also are an important thing, right? Because I think that being an effective leader is looking at your heart, which is your character, your head, which is your beliefs about leadership, your hands, which is, you know, what are you uh, doing uh, to apply what you say you believe in and is in your heart. And the last one, which I think Coach was a big believer in, is habits. What do you do on a daily basis to be the kind of person that you wanted? Coach was adaptable in a lot of ways. And he, Bill Walton made John Wooden a better coach. Keith Wilkes, Jamal Wilkes made uh, Coach Wooden a better coach. Kareem made Coach a better coach because he was able to adapt without sacrificing his principles. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. You know, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. And I think that's what made Coach Wooden amazing. He didn't have a good day and have all these amazing quotes. He lived a life that was centered around these incredible um, decisions and principles. And it wasn't like he didn't have a tough day, but he had created these habits of excellence, these commitments um, to live his life for the sake of others that, um, you know, really made it so powerful. And when I, when I think about our team, when I think about building a basketball program here at UCLA, I think about all the ways I listen to his alums talk about him. You know, Keith Erickson, Mike Warren, Kenny Washington, Jamal Wilkes. I was just with Jamal Wilkes um, last weekend on a trip with UCLA. And, you know, they just they just don't talk about the basketball. They just don't. Um, they were wildly successful. And I just think to myself, don't ever lose sight of that. Listen closely because um, his teachings um, were – I mean, it just, it, it just were for deeper things. And, you know, and like I said before, oh, by the way, we're going to be the best at basketball team. Let's move on to the mortar on the right side of the pyramid, going back to the base and working our way up to the apex. The sixth quality is sincerity. Coach put this close to the base of the pyramid and the building blocks of friendship, loyalty, and cooperation because he believed that sincerity is the glue that holds relationships together. One critical aspect of sincerity is being genuine. Another is caring. People need to feel that you genuinely care about them and about what you believe. Who do you know who needs your sincerity and genuine caring? If you lead a team, how much do you know about your team members' lives outside of work or the team? Do they feel relaxed enough to share about themselves? What about your children? It's critical for your kids to feel they can come to you with their problems and concerns. As the old saying goes, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. How are you demonstrating your sincere caring to the people in your life? Number seven is honesty. Honesty is the basis of trust between people. They need to be able to trust you to keep your word and do what you say. Honesty also involves telling the truth even when it's painful for you or the other person. If you think about it, any great coaching or mentoring relationship has to be built upon honesty. You have to tell people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. For instance, when it's time to put together a team or a starting lineup, a coach mustn't lie to players about the reason they didn't make the cut. If he did, then how would those players ever know what to work on to get better? In the same way, Coach tried to be completely honest whenever he recruited high school players for the UCLA basketball program. Coach would never tell a potential recruit he was guaranteed to play. All he'd say was that if the kid was good enough, then he'd get his chance. Coach also would warn recruits that they'd probably be unhappy during their first year. They would be away from home in an academically challenging environment required to practice for two hours every day. But he said, if you don't come to UCLA, you'll always wonder what would have happened if you did. So think it over. Not your standard recruiting speech, but recruits and their families appreciated Coach's honest description. When have you shared honestly with someone about a painful experience in your own life with the goal of helping the other person benefit from your example. This kind of honesty takes courage and 
vulnerability. But these are often the lessons that will have the greatest impact on those you wish to mentor or lead. Reliability is the next quality. People need to know that they can count on you and you need to know that you will do your best whatever the situation may be. Reliability is a key component of trustworthiness and every team player and team leader must be worthy of others' trust and respect. As the former Indiana farm boy once wrote, people can bet the farm on us and still be able to sleep at night. Sometimes the most reliable people end up taking a back seat to the flashier performers, the superstars like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bill Walton. But every great team also has individuals that you know you can count on to perform at their best, rain or shine, day after day. And in truth, those are the people who will hold your team together and give the superstars the chance to shine. Coach Wooden always went out of his way to acknowledge the reliable players on his teams. When Abdul-Jabbar played at UCLA between 1966 and 1969, he was on teams that won three national championships in a row. But the player the media overlooked was the most reliable and versatile on the squad. Kenny Heights uh, played on three national championship teams. His first year, he's a starting forward. His second year, he's a sixth man at either forward or guard. His senior year, he's a starting guard. He, in three different years, and I don't know one has ever come close to doing something like that, I don't think. You'd have to play on three national championship teams in a row. And who else has done that except UCLA in that one period of time? And, uh, but he made for a, a very well, well, well balanced, uh, well balanced team. That almost never happens in basketball. But Kenny Heights made it look easy. How's that for demonstrating reliability and versatility? Do people feel they can count on you? Can you be relied upon to do your best in any situation? Would you consider yourself trustworthy? And, and more important, do others consider you trustworthy? It's easy to increase your reliability. Simply do what you say you will do and put in your best effort in every circumstance. When you do that, trust will grow and you'll have the satisfaction of keeping your word. The last quality we'll talk about in this session is integrity. This is not simply being true to yourself. There are many people who are being true to themselves when they act like a complete jerk. True integrity is purity of intention, keeping true to higher principles and having a pure heart. There's a reason that coach places integrity close to the top of the pyramid. Integrity is essential to make sure you are seeking success for the best of reasons and with the highest of intent. Not many people know about the way Coach Wooden demonstrated integrity back in the 1940s. In 1947, Wooden's team at Indiana State Teachers College won their conference title, and they were invited to play in the National Association of Intercollegiate Basketball Tournament. It was a huge honor and a chance for a team from a small college to be in the national spotlight. But Coach Wooden declined the invitation. Why? The tournament had a policy of only allowing white players to compete, and Indiana State's team had an African-American, Clarence Walker, on the squad. Clarence Walker, they wouldn't permit me to come. They invited the team. I was all invitational, but I couldn't bring Clarence Walker. Now, Clarence, wasn't going to get to play hardly at all. He was perhaps the 12th man of a 12-man team. But I wouldn't go because they didn't take them all or take none. And so I wouldn't go, and I refused the invitation. Well, the next year, we have an even better year, and we're invited again. And I refuse. And uh, finally, they said, I can bring you, but he couldn't stay in the hotel uh, with us. And I refused again. And... Uh, but I, I was supposed by the NAACP and, and uh, Clarence's uh, parents, they wanted me to take to go and he could stay with a minister and his wife and kind of see he could eat with us in the Mulebach Hotel where we're staying as long as we're in a private dining room. That's how things have changed a little bit. And uh, so he got to, we want them, we, we went to the championship game, but 
I think it's about three years later, I think the you know, black team won it. And so that was a breakthrough. And I kind of, I, I kind of feel that I helped the breakthrough. To leave one member behind, especially one who was hardworking both on the court and in the classroom because of a discriminatory policy would go against not only my conscience, but also everything I had emphasized to my players, coach wrote to the tournament invitation committee. As a leader, integrity is one of the most important qualities you can demonstrate to your team. Some people call it walking your talk. Others say that it's being true to your principles. Author C.S. Lewis said that integrity is doing the right thing even when nobody's watching. How have you demonstrated integrity to yourself, your family, your team? Have you stuck to your principles even when it was tough to do so? If you have teenagers and they break the rules, are you consistent in disciplining them without anger, but with a clear explanation of the consequences of their actions? One of the dictionary definitions of integrity is the state of being whole and undivided. I think this means that who you are, what you say, what you do, and what you teach are all the same all based upon the sound moral principles that civilizations through the years recognize as important to living a good life. Emerson once wrote, who you are speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. Make sure that what your actions and words say will make you proud. Let's listen to more of our guests speak about these eight qualities. Then, in the next session, you'll hear about the top two pieces of mortar that will help you reach the very top of the pyramid. You know, Coach Wooden's mortars, uh, such as sincerity and reliability and integrity and honesty, uh, have impacted me and I'm sure so many others. I know Truett Cathy, the founder of Chick-fil-A, always quotes a Proverbs verse where his father told him about the most important thing is your reputation as a man. And I've always felt like your reputation to men is something, but God knows who you are. And it's hard to play that two sides and uh, live a life of being a hypocrite or phony. As a Christian, I believe we're to be an ambassador for Christ and carry out those mortars that Coach Wooden so dealt, you know, just so eloquently um, emphasized. Without a doubt, wouldn't you like to be surround somebody that's sincere and honest and reliable being responsible uh you know that people can count on on you to 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 do things and and to be a sincere person you know that uh you tell the truth you aren't trying to you know uh twist uh, a message and it's a it's really see i i think he really believed that success uh started in the inside and moved out it wasn't just a head thing and the, and the it's a heart thing and the big question is are you here in life to serve or be served you know and is it about you or is it about the people around you and those are all character uh things and and uh, then if you have the right character then you can learn things that can make you more uh successful and you also be open to learning i actually talk about the mortar being love it really was for him the word that held it all together but it's important to understand it's not love the emotion it's love like when you go to a wedding and they read from first corinthians love that's patient and kind doesn't boast doesn't envy always hopes always trusts always perseveres that's what coach's pyramid is about it's about using love as the mortar for everything else that's in that pyramid and, and i do really really deeply believe it's why his impact was so deep and so lasting i'm sure you're hearing it from everyone you go talk to that the impact wasn't a glancing blow it was a dramatic life-changing positive thing that when it brought joy and happiness to other people because you became a better coach wow, is it great for you? And, uh, you know, that to me is the ultimate benefit of following Coach's example. Boo Ben Adam, may his tribe increase 
awoke one night from a deep dream of peace and saw within the moonlight of his room, making it rich like a lily in bloom, an angel riding in a book of gold. Exceeding peace had, a peace had made Ben Adam bold, and to the present room he said, What writest thou? And the vision raised her head and said, in a voice made sweet of sweet accord, the names of those who love the Lord. And is mine one, said Abu? Nay, not so, replied the angel. Abu spoke more low, but cheerily still, and said, I pray thee, then write me as one who loves his fellow men. And the angel wrote and vanished, but the next night came again, and amidst the great awakening light, opened the book to show the names of those whom God had blessed, and lo, Ben Adam's name led all the rest. Awesome. You know, I just wanted to start off by saying um, I've, I've heard this so many times and, you know, the more we unpack John Wood and I, I just think he's the epitome of this, but uh, uh, you hear that service to many leads to greatness. And I think at the very, very core of who John Wooden was, he was, he had a servant's heart. Everything, his motivation was um, to be a difference maker. It was to change lives. It was to invest in these young men not just in their basketball career, but in every area of their life. And you can clearly see the, the massive ongoing impact he had all through these coaches and now that he's having through all of us. So just an incredible guy. So I'm not going to go through every single one of these. We went over eight today, and you guys probably noticed that we went through uh, faith and patience last time because we were a little out of order because I actually I, I skipped this one on accident. But um, – if you missed the last Zoom, it's I think this is Zoom 22. So if you go in the files, Zoom 21 um, is is when they talked about faith and patience. But um, ambition, uh, ad adapt adaptability, and you know I wrote down a couple notes on here because this is so huge uh, in our business, right? Because there's different seasons, there's seasons of change. And when you mentioned like if you, if you imagine you're a basketball coach, every year you have seniors. And you're losing those people, right? So you're building this team around certain people and you lose those people. And I just thought of kind of in our business sometimes, we have people that come in and they go out, right? Because it's different seasons. So we never want to uh, position ourselves, just like a coach wouldn't think, you know, I've got this one player I've got to count on. Because you're going to have them for three, four years. And then if you want to continue to grow, if you want to continue to be a champion, then you work with new players. What is that? So that's such a amazing picture of our business as we have people who come in and people who leave. And of course we'll have people that stick around for, for 10 years, 20 years. Um, but you're going to have people, they're going to come and maybe they go diamond, double diamond. And then they, they, they graduate, right? They, 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 it's the bridge for some people. It works as a bridge and it gets them to a certain point and then they feel called to go off and do something else. And that's just part of it. And so like he mentioned in the, in the uh, uh, video, you know, there's the highs and there's the lows. There's the emotions. And, and like we always tell our team, believe in everybody, but don't count on anyone on your team for you to be successful. The only person that you can control and that you can count on, truly count on, is yourself, right? So um, I just love, and then I love how adaptable Mark and Cindy are. And, and the corporate team, you know, they're always, always adapting. They're always coming up with new promotions. They're always trying new things. And I love that because that's really innovative. Uh, the fact that they came out, you know, after what happened with, with Mark's health and everything, and, and he got the keto and boom, he didn't waste a lot of time doing, you know, years of research. He said, this is the deal. This works. And man, I'll tell you what, I was just at green carpet and I saw people there that I've known for four or five years that have lost 50 pounds, a hundred pounds. And they're like, I'm on keto, I'm on keto. And we're seeing it across the board. So I love that our company is adaptable and we're going to continue to bring that to the table. Resourcefulness. I, I love the, now I'm always going to think of MacGyver when I think of resourcefulness, you know, and if you don't know who MacGyver is, you need to just, you just check it out. Cause it's watch a couple of those episodes. It's great. And then just uh, how adaptable Wooden was to and, and fight man fight. And I, I think of my wife when I think of fight because that word feisty, she's just feisty and she's a fighter and passionate fire in the belly. I love that. And so, and that's a huge clue guys. When you, when you're meeting new people on your team and they're showing up, when you see that, that, uh, 
fire. Sometimes you can see it come out of people's like eyes, their excitement, their passion, their, their drive, their, uh, all, you know, all the, all the above. Right. And you just see how excited they are about everything. Um, adversity and change build us. So I think that's a message we have to constantly remind ourselves of and remind other people of because it doesn't always feel good, right? Adversity and change usually doesn't feel good, but ultimately it's what's building us and it's necessary. I've heard it said that a failure is the fertilizer of success. And so that's kind of, you know, that's got a lot, a lot inside that meaning and fertilizer is kind of stinky, right? But it's, it's, it's fertilizer is important. Uh, if you're growing crops, if you know anything about farming, you have to fertilize so that you're going to uh, create an environment where your crops can be more successful. And so that's just how, that's how it is. I've heard uh, some people say that you have to ride the struggle bus to Successville, right? So if you want to get to Successville, you have to go through the struggle, which is what builds your character to be able to handle the weight and the pressure of leadership. Uh, everyone can't handle that. Most of us, when we're when we're brand new, it's, it's too much. So you have to grow into that person that can handle that. And the things that maybe are uh, very stressful to you now, or maybe uh, just, just you don't want to deal with now, later on, it's not a big deal anymore. Later on, after you've gone through the struggle, you look back and you go, the things that used to stress me out, the things that used to almost take me out, aren't really even a big deal anymore because you've grown and you have new uh, eyes for life. You see life through a new lens and you see the things that truly matter and the things that really don't matter and you start to identify those. And that's what all this, this process is. So um, adversity, audible ready. Again, I think I thought of Mark and Cindy, how they're audible ready. I mean, they're, you know, if, if they feel that this needs to happen or that needs to happen, they're steering the ship and they're not just taking us str straight you know, into whatever, they know where we're headed and they know how to get us there. And they're very in tune with that. And I love that because that's a huge trait that is so, so rare. Um, I just wrote down, Wooden lived his life based on others. Wow. And, and that is so, that's, that's a key right there. You know, they say success leaves clues. And that's, the, that's one of the biggest clues is that he was so focused on serving and giving. And ultimately, he gets the credit now all these years later, but he was the one that was impacting the whole, all these lives and, and then the ripple effect. So, so we have ambition, adapti adaptability, resourcefulness, fight. And then on the other side, uh, sincerity, the glue that holds relationships together. Those two words, genuine and caring. People know when you're auth authentic. You know, if, if you, let's put it this way. If, if, you're, if you have a copy paste encouragement that you're giving to someone, you're amazing, I love you keep up the good work and, and your distributor sees you put that on their post. And then they see that you put that on 97 other people, distributors post the exact same thing. How authentic is that? Right. There's a copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So be authentic and genuine with people. So, so important. Honesty, uh, basis of trust and always telling the truth. Tell people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. I think this is important too. If you, if you're on a teammate's uh, social media and you see it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not attractive at all, right? Well, you got to have the personal courage to reach out to them and say, Hey, um, this is your, you know, this is your storefront. This is your advertisement. Let's, let's do some coaching here and help you change this a little bit because this isn't going to get you to where you want to go. And those real kinds of conversations have to happen. Or if someone says, you know, I've, I've talked to everyone and I can't get anyone to sign up. Okay. Well, let's, let's have a real conversation. How many people have you talked to? You know, has it been five in, in the last two weeks? You know, we talked to five people. Well, we got to talk to five more and then five more and five more. And so we have to have those, those real conversations. Um, I love this too. And I wrote this down. This is, this is one I'm going to use. Okay. And this, this isn't exactly what he said, but I, it just, I had this moment. And so what I wrote down is if you don't join, it works. You will always wonder what would have happened if you did. Right. And I know he uh, uh, shared something to that effect, but I thought, oh, my gosh, that's so important because that's something I want to say to people. If someone's on the fence, they're like, I'm just not sure. That's so true. That's so true. You know, the number one regret people have when they're in their nurse in the nursing home getting ready to die is not taking more chances. It's not working more hours. 
you know, it's not taking more chances. It's not, it's, it's not spending more time with their loved ones and taking more risks. And that's just the fact of the matter. So we have to have the personal courage to say, Hey, if you don't partner with me now, you will always wonder what would have happened if you did and you deserve this business. So let's do it. And I love, I love that. Um, your, your position, you're positioning yourself from a position of, of confidence. It's, it's called posturing, right? When you can say something to someone like you deserve this opportunity and friends of yours deserve to have this opportunity. Also that word deserve. I think that's powerful because you, it, you're not coming across needy at all. You're coming across like you deserve to do this. You should do this. There's no reason to not do this. So let's do this. Right. Honesty, um, reliability. People can count on you. Uh, sometimes the most reliable people take a back seat. I love that. Do what you say you'll do and put in your best effort. I, I think that's huge. Um, that's just called, you know, in my opinion, be, being a person of your word, uh, integrity, purity of intention, uh, just put, leave no one behind and be an ambassador for Christ. The, the, the Proverbs, the Chick-fil-A owner. Um, I love that success starts on the inside and moves out. And then, you know, that they kind of wrapped it up with just the whole, the whole love, love is patient, love is kind. And I would add in there, love is rare. And so when you and I can be authentic and we can truly love our teams and we can truly love people and they they know that we're authentic, then everything else just starts to work itself out. You know, what I'm learning more and more as I get older, just turned 45 a couple weeks ago, <laughs> is that all this stuff, all, the, all these blessings that we get, it's not for us. It's, it's to go through us to share with people who God is and to be a good representation. I mean, when you think of an ambassador, like an ambassador in a country, they represent the whole country, right? So when we're an ambassador for Christ, we want to represent who Christ is and we want to model ourselves as closely. Of course, we're always going to fall short, but we want to model ourselves as closely as possible. So when people look at us, they're getting a glimpse of who Christ is. And that's why it's so important. And that's why John Wooden taught all this because every single one of these things line up with who Christ was when he was on earth. So. Um, I thought this was great. And I know we're going to go a couple minutes over because there's a few people on here I want to definitely hear from. But uh, yeah, just the, 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 this, the whole thing, I, I feel like that John wouldn't put together. I mean, I, I'm sure he prayed through it and I know he changed it over the years, but it's just, it is such an amazing roadmap. And it's just that you can put in one picture and what you're seeing is you're seeing the gospel and you're seeing a man who represented that very, very well. So, Mr. Tay, what are some of your takeaways? Oh, man. Uh, I, I got so, like, I literally got so much out of this, not from just me just taking, you know, all the notes, but just knowing and just trusting that Chad is also taking notes and everybody else is, and you're going to get on here and share so much. But I just love the fact that God meets you where you are. And if you're just open and receptive to just hear, and then he would, like, give you exactly what you need. So, uh, he just reminded me um, of this verse, and as soon as he, uh, we started reading it, it was like he just spoke to me and said, to whom much is given, much is required. And then he just, uh, we started talking about adaptability. And uh, I immediately, like, I knew because we just got this new dog, and it works, just announced this uh, amazing promotion that, you know, we was going to have to do some major uh, uh, adapting to that. So for me, like just hearing that and just showing up this morning, just hearing these simple truths that I can just take and just take it into my day and the rest of my uh, week and the rest of, as the year goes on and just take that and apply it. I was like, man, it's like it's when you're just so open and like you're in, in the line with what you're supposed to be doing. Like you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, putting everything together yourself, just trusting God and knowing that he's going to give you the resources you need, the people you need to get you to that next place that you need to go. So I just love that the fact that he talked about adaptability this morning. And one of the things I love, he said, you have to anticipate change. And I just thought about uh, as far as the doll aspect, like I didn't know the bonuses. I didn't know like uh, how they was going to do the promotion and all that, but it works. But I knew like on my, in my mind, like I had this, dog on my dream board forever so like I did all the research I did I knew everything that I need to know how to take care of this dog and um he said I anticipate change so I did that and the thing I loved the most was like because uh you know like raising puppies are almost like raising babies like they don't know what they know that they don't know so they're always learning so like it's easy to get frustrated with that but he just mentioned uh when he said fight 
like immediately they just aroused something in me because it was like a focused passion. And I just remember like, yeah, this dog is pooping on this carpet. Remember, this dog was also on your dream board. Like, and then he said, uh, it's a deep desire to do what it takes to get done. And he said, it has nothing to do with winning and losing. And when I heard it has nothing to do with winning and losing, it just reminded me like, yeah, he's a puppy. Like, you knew like this was a stage that he was going to go through. So like, you have to anticipate that and just get like celebrate those small wins that you have. So every time he go outside, uh, I was reading this, um, the How to Win Friends and Influence People, and it was just talking about how you just praise people, like, like pray, it was like, I forget, be hearty and be hearty in something and, and something in praise. But it was like, you lavish in praise. Lavish, yep, yep, and, and hearty in praise. Not just, and it just clicked to me, it was like, celebrate these small wins that you have with these dogs. Celebrate these small wins that you have uh, with your kids. Celebrate these small wins that you have with your wife when she signed a lawyer customer or distributor. Remember, like, hey, these are things that you signed up for. Hey, like, you decided that she's gonna focus 100% on this and you're gonna focus 100% on this. So when you get this dream dog that you want, you can't expect for her, you know, to cut back and go 75% on this and you just start doing like 75%. No, like, you have to stick to that. So I think that when he reminded me, like, to whom much is given, much is required, and just here, you know, right at the beginning, because things kind of got hectic here, because like, everybody's up this morning. So it's kind of busy for us this morning, but I think he gave it to me, like, right at the beginning to where, like, I can get it and hear it and, like, don't have to worry about taking notes or like just word like here everything in the Zoom doing like, hey, Chad is taking notes. Chad do this every Tuesday and Thursday. He goes through everything. So you're going to have an opportunity to hear some of these great things that you miss. So uh, I just love the fact that he just meets you where you are. And I just love the fact that uh, these um, character traits and this is so simple for you to just learn and grow in and just uh, apply it to your daily living. So for me, uh, it was just something that uh, he just gave me this a uh, these short words and, the, and just the adaptability part was something that I just feel like I needed to hear because I was, yesterday was probably one of the longest days. I was up from like 5 to 11. Uh, he pooped on the carpet as soon as he got up and he pooped on the carpet as soon as he got bed. So I kind of went to bed. Uh, I wasn't pissed, but I wasn't happy at either. Uh, but the thing that I, uh, I did this morning, uh, for some reason, I had this post on my Snapchat and on my Insta story, I, po I, I posted it. It said, today I choose joy. And uh, I just got on the Zoom early, and uh, the first thing I hear is Chad playing this awesome song that I love. And I just start singing this song, and I hear Chad, you know, singing this song in the background. I just think that just raised my level to, like, hey, just be open and just appreciate where you are. Be grateful that you was able to check this dog off your dream board. Be, be grateful that you're able to be a full-time family and, you know, just stay home with your wife and just allow her, you know, to work and build build uh, the dreams and uh, everything that you want. So for me, I think just these simple truths that, uh, that we're getting just because we're just uh, really just being open to learning and just being open to growing. Uh, I think uh, it, for me, it was just uh, eye opening. It was also a reminder uh, that, you know, God, uh, he's always with us. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're always in alignment. And I think probably the, for me, I always tell people, the main thing that you can do is show up. Like you don't have to like show up expecting that you have to go out and give some big speech or you have to go out and do this. Sometimes he, you like, he, well, I think all the time he uses other people to get you to like get you what you need. So for me, I think we're just, uh, just coming to this like with a, with an open mindset, knowing like, hey, yeah, you had a, a long day yesterday. Remember, like, God didn't put that dog in your dream, boy, but you did. So I think for me this morning, he just gave me some simple reminders of like, hey, trust me, like, you, like you, you're, you're strong enough to handle all this. I wouldn't have gave it to you if you wasn't. And I just think the timing that he gave it to him, because we have this promotion going on, my wife has been like so focused on building our business. She's been doing such an incredible job that I, I can't take it out on her that, you know, I got my dream, my, my dream dog and he's kind of, he's a puppy. So it's like, you have to expect those things, but at the same time, embrace that and grow and just celebrate those smallest wins. And just remember, like you're never losing. Like if, you, if you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do, and I think Chad said it best at the end of the day, if you could say to yourself, like I had a good day, then you're successful. And I think just because this morning, I just, I just decided, hey, I'm going to choose joy. Like, if he poop on the carpet, so well, I'll just take him outside and I'll celebrate him when he go out and, and do it. So, for me, it was just uh, these small reminders that I think God dropped on me because I just decided to show up and be open and really choose to uh, defeat the, the things that are going to increase me uh, in life. So, I just love the fact that he just used simple truth this morning just to give me some things that I need just to remind me, hey, 
Like you're in the right place at the right time. Just continue to grow, continue to show up, and just continue to continue to trust the plans that I have for you. So that's what I had. It wasn't much as far as like what I, I think I used to get, but it was like some simple things that he reminded me of. And just uh, I think just the adaptability part was I was like, man, this is like I just feel like you just slapping me in the face with this memoir. So I just thought it was awesome that he just you know uh, that you skipped uh, this part Tuesday and we had it today. And I thought it was uh, for me it was. You know, it wasn't a coincidence. I just thought it was all aligned on purpose. So I, uh, I'm, I'm excited because uh, this is, regardless of how he's going through this potty training thing, I think just by me showing up this morning, just hearing these simple truth, these reminders, I think it just changed my whole uh, perspective and my uh, outlook on how to uh, just uh, go about my days, I would say. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Definitely. Gradually, you get, to, you get to chase that puppy around, huh? I do, I do. I tell you, I choose it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I saw, I don't know if she's available to talk right now, but Ashley, right now, are, how are you doing today? Nope, she muted herself back. Okay, she must not be in a place to talk right now. I, I see some people on here. I'm just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and Connected see what's going on. Icon. So, I see Sean Sykes on here. Let's see what Sean's up to. What's going on, Sean? Hey, Chad. Um, what, what is the chances that you can give me like two minutes? I'm putting shoes on my son. <laughs> see, well, I'm going to wrap this up, but I would love okay. to get back on that a little bit later. We, we already kind of went over anyway, but I wanted to give you the opportunity, but totally understand. Well, I will say then really quick, um, and, you know, I guess great minds think alike with between Tay and I. Um, I have notes in the house and one of the things that I starred was accountability and I did it a few times because, uh, or I'm sorry, adaptability, because, um, I think, you know, that's exactly what we do here. Like, you know, with the, you have to, nothing, everything's different. Hold on a second. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, let's see what you know, things on a daily basis, especially being a husband of somebody who does this business, you have to adapt because our wives sometimes feel like they're failing at everything, right? They feel like, well, I can't be the perfect wife. I can't be the perfect um, business builder. I can't be the perfect mom. I can't be the perfect this or that. So you have to know how to basically think on your feet. You have to adapt to the situation and, and support them and tell them, no, hey, listen, and one of the greatest things of uh, pieces of advice that we were ever given was you can do anything, but you can't do everything. And I think we have to be able to, on the run and on the fly, be able to, um, you know, adapt to the, to the situation. And for me, it's like, okay, my wife feels like she's, you know, I can tell, I can already see within her actions, because I know her, how I need to act. So I'm quick to be able to show her support and give her those words of affirmation to tell her that you're doing a great job, you know, and you're, you're, you are doing, you know, you're, you know, you sign those distributors, but you know what I mean? Like I got the kids like, so, so Tay and I, our situations are very, very similar to where that we have to be a support system internally in the house, you know, because they're going to, they're getting support from other people, but we have to be that one that see that we're in, we're in the grind. We see what's happening on a daily basis. We see, you know, the highs and the lows of our wives. So we have to be able to, uh, you know, to, to adapt and to, and to be able to um, push them through and push them through the finish line when they feel like they're not, when they're, when they feel like they're failing. And we have wives that, and Chad, we spoke about that. Like my wife is, is a type triple A. Like she is like, everything is, she, it's gotta be right. It's gotta be perfect. It's, and, and that's to a flaw at times, you know what I mean? Because they have such high expectations, not only for themselves, but for their team, the distributors and the people that are, they surround themselves with, that they really truly want to see them succeed. So when somebody doesn't succeed, it's like, well, you have the opportunity. You have, you just have to find it with, with from within. So being able to, uh, you know, to adapt to this to the situation and the surroundings that your wife that that are that are going on at, at the moment is so crucial and so important. And then um, what I wrote down, uh, which I thought was a really really good quote, it was. Uh, Oh, with wooden it was tongue and mouth his tongue in his mouth was the same as the tongue in his shoes always straight and that's what you want you want somebody that is going to they're not going to waver they're, they're they're directly down the line and that goes back with like integrity and just it tells us so much about a person is that you 
you know it. You know, whether they say, hey, this is the way it is, whether you like it or not, that's it. And you know what you're getting from that person. And I think that's one of the things I know that Jen and I, and we were talking to a friend of ours at, um, at Green Carpet this past weekend. We had a situation a year ago, and they came to us and said, listen, no matter what was going on, we knew that you two were telling us the truth. Every, you know, that this and that was going on. I said, but we knew that you guys were giving it to us straight. And that's, Jen and I, like, we really pride ourselves on being truthful, being obviously relatable, but letting everybody know, like, hey, this is what it is. This business is hard, but you can do it. You have the ability to do it. So um, I think it's so important that, uh, you know, that you do stay the same and that you, uh, you, you are, you, you, you try to pick and choose the attributes of a John Wooden. I think that we, as in this company, have such a, um, such a, um, I can't think of the word, but we have the opportunity to hear Mark Pentecost on a regular basis. And how many things are we hearing week after week after week? Fire in the belly was today. How many times did he speak about that this past weekend? Because he wants people, he's at that top leader thing, he wants people with fire in their belly. And he said, he said that for as long as we've been in this business, I've heard him say that. So there's so many nuggets that he says <clears throat> that he's getting from a Wooden or from a Roan or from, you know, a John Maxwell, for whoever he's listening to um, that, are, that we can bring into our daily lives. So that's all I had. Um, so I, I appreciate you giving me the, the, the time to, uh, to share that because I did want to touch on that, um, that adaptability because I think it's so important. That's so good. And, and the more you know, we go through this and the more I get to know Mark, he's, he's in that same DNA. He, he's, he's a John Maxwell. A Jim, a Jim Rohn, a John Wooden, and uh, you know we get to hear him just on on some of his talks, the dark horse speech, and the uh, the uh, being in the process. I love that one where the guy was playing the piano, you know, and it, it's a process, oh yeah, it's a process that we all have to go through, and um, I think the the beauty is in the journey, you know, it, it's it's a lot of people start off with a destination in mind because they want to achieve this, this, and this, but the true value of all this stuff is who we become in the process. And so that's what I love. Oh man, I better wrap this up. My wife's message me from the other room. So, <laughs> Hey, so thank you all for jumping on here today. Hope you're getting value. Hey, I just have to shout out real quick. Uh, Tay, I, he's rocking the made for more, uh, three men's shirt, you know, and I got the other version on right here from last year. And, uh, we are currently, uh, we have t tickets are on sale. I know, I know Tay and Sean and myself, Joel Dunn, a legendary UFC fighter, nine-time champion, Matt Hughes, are going to be there. So tell your husband, tell him to come on out. It's close to the St. Louis, Missouri area. It's going to be about 45 minutes south of St. Louis. So in September, just message me if you need details. Appreciate all you guys. I'll see you Tuesday morning as we wrap up uh, this I think this is module six on the mortar and we have a couple more modules to go through and then we're on to the next thing, which I've got a, a similar one that's on, on, on your own that I'm thinking about doing. It's, it's really, really good too. So y'all have a blessed day. Talk to y'all later.